the term, you know, anti-aging has been much abused in popular culture, attached to all manner of unproven products and procedures, whereas the term should really be reserved for things that can delay or reverse aging by targeting one of the established aging mechanisms, the so-called hallmarks of aging, the common denominators of the aging process, like, for example, the buildup of misfolded proteins that can be disposed of through autophagy. Have you ever wondered if there's a natural way to extend your lifespan and promote healthy aging? The answer might lie within the very cells of your body. In this video, we'll be joining Dr. Michael Greger, a renowned physician and author of How Not to Die. And How Not to Die cookbook to explore the fascinating world of autophagy, your body's built-in cellular recycling system. Dr. Greger is a leader in evidence-based approaches to longevity. Today, we're diving deep into the science of autophagy, uncovering the natural methods you can use to activate this powerful process and potentially live a longer, healthier life. Get ready to learn how autophagy works on a cellular level, essentially cleaning out your cells and promoting rejuvenation. Dr. Greger will explain how this process can potentially protect you from chronic diseases and even slow down the aging process. Dr. Greger unveils surprising dietary strategies that research suggests can boost autophagy. Learn how simple changes in diet and eating specific food choices can work wonders for your cellular health. Bonus, longevity breakfast at the end. This video will equip you with the knowledge and practical tools to harness the power of autophagy for a longer, healthier you. Let's listen to Dr. Michael Greger tell us more about autophagy. See. At any given time, most of our cells are producing and assembling more than 10,000 distinct proteins, each of which can become misfolded or damaged at any time and require a cleanup in aisle three. So, but during times of excess nutrition, our body figures, why bother? Right? We can just toss it in the corner, make another. Right? Having evolved in the context of scarcity, our body expects to fall on the hard times any day now and can put off spring cleaning until then. But these days, those lean times hardly ever come, so our cells just continually end up hoarding junk. That's where autophagy comes from. From the Greek words for self-eating, it's a housekeeping process by which defective cellular components are broken down and scrap for spare parts. This doubles as both kind of salvage operation and quality control, clearing out some of the damaged debris implicated in the aging process while renewing our cells in a sort of cellular reset. As one review put it, the janitor is the undercover boss. Tell us more about how autophagy relates to anti-aging. Our ancient ancestors often went for several days without food, so autophagy was constantly being switched on. But these days, our cells no longer need to kind of clean out the corners for sustenance, and so the tainted heaps just pile higher and higher, which isn't good because autophagy is essential for lifespan extension. It's not only necessary, but sometimes sufficient for increasing longevity, self-digestion for lifespan extension. Boosting autophagy alone can boost lifespan, at least in mice, by an average of 12%, and it also boosts health span. Unfortunately, our body's ability to take out the trash declines with age, leading to this vicious cycle. Garbage builds up, accelerating aging, which leads to more garbage buildup. Is there anything that can help? Anything that can help? Well, you know, starving yourself generates discomfort, but there is something that activates autophagy that many people find comforting. Coffee. <laughs> At a human equivalent dose, both regular and decaf rapidly induce autophagy within hours in mice, and coffee can extend the lifespans of some rats, but what about people? Well, in humans, we we'll only have observational research, but to date about 20 studies have followed more than 10 million people over time, and those drinking three cups of coffee a day, 13% lower 
risk of dying from all causes put together. And decaf appears to be just as protective, so it's not the caffeine. Coffee contains more than a thousand bioactive compounds. Uh, the polyphenol chlorogenic acid is the most abundant antioxidant in coffee, so researchers started there and indeed was found to enhance autophagy in human cells. More than 100 coffees have been tested, and the chlorogenic acid levels vary by more than uh, 30-fold. Interestingly, the major contributor to this wide range is Starbucks, with its extremely low chlorogenic acid content, thought to be because they roast their beans so dark that they destroy it. Uh, freeze drying is, uh, is okay. Um, and uh, brewed has more than espresso. Paper filtered is the best because it traps the cholesterol raising compounds in coffee, perhaps explaining why those drinking filtered coffee had even lower mortality rates than those drinking unfiltered coffee. What about foods? Any food components that can activate autophagy? Spermidine, the longevity elixir spermidine. Don't be put off by the name. <laughs> spermidine and its byproduct spermine are actually found throughout the body when it was later independently discovered in the brain and the muscles. They called it uh, neurodine and musculamine until they found out, oh, it was all the same compound, and so naming rights defaulted to the less palatable original. Our body can make it from scratch, but we can boost levels by eating spermidine-rich foods, which is good news because spermidine levels tend to decline with age, dropping more than half by the time we reach our 50s. This decline is seen across the biological spectrum with one remarkable exception, naked mole rats also known by their more cuddly nickname, Sand Puppy. <laughs> Considered to be a non-aging mammal without any visible signs of aging, almost no decline in physiological function um, over decades, no typical signs of aging like loss of muscle mass or, or, or fertility, perhaps in part because they're able to maintain um, their high levels of spermidine, uh, something that you also see in human centenarians. What are the studies on spermidine? To prove cause and effect, extra spermidine was fed to animals and induction of autophagy by spermidine promotes longevity, increasing lifespans of mice, for example, by as much as 25%. In a database of more than a thousand life-extending compounds, among the small subset with the fewest side effects, spermidine has the largest documented lifespan extension. What are the other anti-aging components that are in spermidine? Longevity can be improved even when started late in life, kind of the human equivalent of changing your diet when you're already in your 50s. Anti-aging effects were found in the heart and kidneys, rejuvenating immune function, delaying brain aging, and improving cognitive function. Yeah, but this was in animals like fruit flies and mice. I mean, who cares if spermidine cures flies? I've seen your moments. <laughs> what about in people? Hundreds of men and women, their 40s through 80s, were followed for 20 years, and after looking at 146 different components of their diets, the single most predictive of longevity was spermidine. How much spermidine they were eating, higher spermidine intake, is uh, linked to lower mortality. Those who consumed the most spermidine had a reduced risk of death from all major causes, which is what we'd expect from an anti-aging compound. Critically, the survival advantage persisted even after controlling for dietary excellence, meaning it wasn't just because they were eating healthier foods in general, but specifically spermidine-rich foods in particular. How big of an effect are we talking? Well, the reduction in mortality risk between getting more than 12 milligrams of spermidine a day compared to getting less than nine was as if those eating more spermidine were 5.7 years younger. It's as, if, it's as if by eating certain foods, they were able to kind of effectively turn back the clock nearly six years. 
The findings were so extraordinary, the researchers sought to replicate their results in a, in a whole new set of individuals and indeed arrived at the same conclusion. Are there foods which provide a high source of spermidine? This led some to propose that spermidine may be an anti-aging vitamin. When we're younger, we seem to be able to make enough. But as we get older, uh, we may need to start ensuring we're getting enough in our diet um, to maintain autophagy into old age. Well, if spermidine is going to be considered an anti-aging vitamin, where is that vitamin found? Beans are said to have the highest natural amounts. But I compiled a list of the top spermidine sources and pig pancreas. Beat out bean burritos for the bronze. This is virtually every food, averaging at least two milligrams of spermidine per serving with a fermented soy food called tempeh leading the list, along with plain white mushrooms. While some have suggested the genetic engineering of spermidine-rich crops, there are already a plethora of naturally spermidine-rich foods. As a certified dark green leafy snob, I was begrudgingly impressed to see lettuce score so high. Uh, the lettuce is so light, a 100 gram serving would be about three cups of lettuce, but even the spermidine little side salads could certainly uh, really uh, add up. Uh, in the book, I spent a lot of time going through the entire list, but the single most concentrated source is wheat germ, with two and a half milligrams of spermidine and just the seven grams in a tablespoon. It's also the cheapest source, costing as little as two cents per milligram. You Does wheat germ work? Does wheat germ actually do anything? Let's randomize people to some dinner rolls and find out. A randomized double-blind pilot in which older adults were secretly slipped some spermidine in the form of wheat germ baked into dinner rolls versus placebo rolls with wheat bran instead, and those with mild dementia improved way beyond all available anti-dementia drug treatments so far. Admittedly, that's not saying much, but... What's the harm of sprinkling a little wheat germ on your food? You know, the latest Alzheimer's drugs don't appear to work at all. All you get for your $56,000 is a dramatically increased risk of swelling or bleeding into your brain. When the FDA approved it anyway, the head of the American Geriatric Society replied, my head just exploded. <laughs> Maybe they just got uh, slipped a dose of the drug. <laughs> anyway, lots of other clinical spermidine studies, but just to wrap up this section, autophagy is considered the primary system for cleaning the body from the inside out. And we can boost autophagy with aerobic exercise, skipping fries and chips, drinking coffee, and eating specific foods to reach a target of 20 milligrams of spermidine a day. Okay, tomorrow's breakfast is wheat germ in my homemade matcha granola, a couple of eggs, a mango, and coffee. Thank you, Dr. Greger. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. The key to lifelong vitality is in your hands. It's just one bite away.